You know, I was wondering if I should make this video for a while, but I was like, nah. It's like I'm saying I'm an English master or something, which I'm not. So I was like, let's make one when somebody requests it, and here it is. Finally, I got a comment, so let's do this. Well, since I started teaching on italki, I got asked this so many times. Why is your English so good? Before somebody starts nitpicking my English, I do know my English is not perfect. I still hear subtle accent when I watch my videos. Even I'm trying so hard to hide it. My vocabulary is fairly limited. I do make grammatical mistakes. And I appreciate if you point it out since I'm still learning. But I've come this far without spending years in English native countries, without taking any special courses outside high school. I didn't go to university if you ask. So the education on English that I received has stopped at high school. But my English is way better than most Japanese people, so I guess I'm qualified to talk about this? I started learning English at age 10 or 11, which is the age that kids these days start learning it, but it's only started 7 years ago. And back then, we started learning it at 13, so I was a little earlier than most kids. I was watching this kids show called Eigo de Asobo, and I heard American English for the first time. I'm not sure if it was the first time, but, but I found it fascinating. Like, whoa, if I can speak English like this as a Japanese, that would be super cool. So I wanted to learn it as soon as possible, so I started to go to this juku. I probably learn most of the things you learn at this school there. So my grades in English were mostly 10 out of 10, 9 at worst during the mid school. Was I as fluent as I am back then? No. The truth is, I only got this fluent probably like 5 years ago. But my accent was at this level by the time I turned 15. At least I thought it was. But none of the teachers at school had proper American accent. So I'd fail. I wasn't validated properly through my entire school life. So how did I improve my pronunciation? I really loved singing. I still do. So I sang lo a lot of English songs like Avril Lavigne, Queen, Spice Girls, Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Lauren Hill. I did sing this single song, but I didn't know what they were about. I was finally able to understand the lyrics at probably 23. So pronunciation-wise, it's 100% possible to sound like natives without knowing what you say and without studying abroad. You gotta understand that reading, writing, listening, and speaking are completely different skills that you have to work on separately. I'm gonna break it down one by one. What to do to improve your pronunciation is record your voice. That's it. Record it, listen to it, cringe, practice, and do it all over again and again and again and again. In the beginning, you'd be stunned by how differently you sound from what you thought you would, but at some point, you can perfectly hear how you sound without recording. So reading aloud is a must to improve your accent and pronunciation. You start off word by word using the sound button on the web dictionary. Androgynous. Androgynous. Then practice something short. Me, I will repeat whatever I heard on TV. Something like, Make, make it, it possible, possible with, with canon. canon. Then move on to something longer. I will practice narrations of some TV series as well because you can learn very standard English intonation with them. Also, most TV series use the same opening throughout the season, so you can remember it as you go through the series. Year after year, 20-something women come to New York City in search of the two L's. Labels and love. I try to sound as basic as possible. How did I do? My name is Michael Weston. I used to be a spy until... When you burn, you've got nothing. No cash, no credit, no job history. It's stuck in whatever the city they decided to dump you in. So make sure you mimic it perfectly. Remember, the devil's in the details. It makes it easier if you enjoy doing it. I definitely enjoy doing it. I still do. Go ahead and show it off when you must do one. A little bit of confidence will help. Of course, conversation part is also helpful. So don't be shy and try to say yourself. You hear something, you repeat it, and try to enjoy it as much as possible. You definitely improve your listening skills along the way. Basically, if you have good hearing like me and can tell the difference between your accent and native speakers, you're Gucci. All you gotta do is practice. If you're good at impression, that's a plus. It will be easier for you, but if you don't hear the difference, I don't know how I can help. Best way to learn colloquial expressions is watch native speakers speaking. Not listening to it, watching it. Pay attention to their body language, facial expressions, and most importantly, 
subtitles. Make sure you watch with subtitles in your native language and try to translate it into your own words. Subtitles could be your help to understand what it means, but don't rely on it too much because sometimes, most likely in Japanese, the language used in the subtitles are not how we actually speak. So try to translate it however you think is best in your native language. Like remember how you learn your first language. You hear, hear, and hear, and mimic whatever you hear every day. You learn each word as you heard it, observed how it's used in a conversation, and I'm sure you witnessed the emotions that came with it. And at some point, your vocabulary is accumulated enough to judge whether it sounds right or not. So recreate this experience. You know, whoever complains, and get stuck will never be fluent because it's not how you learn languages. Have you like wondered growing up, why do certain sentence structures form the way they are? No, you just like, okay, and moved on. Whenever your parents corrected you like, oh honey, we don't say that, were you like, I don't get it mom. Explain. No, right? And even if your kids ask you the same thing, how would you answer? That's how it is. You don't even need reasoning to comprehend. What matters is you're able to what you want to say and for people to understand the way you want them to. Take konnichiwa for instance. Literally, it means today is. And arigato being couldn't be possible. You realize what it means at some point you gain enough knowledge, but we never ask what it means or how the grammar works. We just know how it's used. So what's important is you know what you're saying and not why the grammar works in certain ways. When you learn new phrases, try to use it with different vocabulary. Make sure you own it, not just encounter with it and move on, but try to own it. Most people who claim they understand English but can't speak it, they don't practice, they don't use it, they don't play with it. That's why they can't speak. So remember, if you want to improve your speaking, you have to work on it. If you have a hard time forming sentences in your head, just write it down first. But make sure you read it aloud. Let your ears and tongue get used to the sound. You'll be able to tell whether it sounds right or not as you mimic native speakers. From a self-learner and teacher's perspective, students who try to play with new vocabulary improve faster. Their objectives are set on being able to speak it, not on passing exams or whatever the stupid reason you're learning it for. So when you take classes, try to be aggressive and inquisitive. Don't wait for your teacher to tell you what to do, but try to come up with as many examples as possible. My English improved to a degree where you can get by daily conversation by mimicking those lines on TV series and movies, but my comprehension level took off after switching from English Japanese dictionary to English dictionary. Until then, my reading was like... Uh. I couldn't even finish mid-long Facebook post back then. But since I started using English dictionary, my reading speed definitely got much faster. It's such an awful process until you gain enough vocabulary to read the entire entry with no difficulties. In the beginning, there was always a word you don't know one after another. It was so time-consuming and exhausting, but I guarantee you, it's worth it. And I think if you can read a dictionary in a language, you can say you know the language because it means you understand the grammar perfectly and have enough amount of vocabulary. So you're like an 8-year-old who knows the basic structure but has few vocabulary. At this level, you can improve by yourself as you expose yourself to new vocabulary. Believe it or not, I hate to sit on the desk and study. Always might sound such a hard work, but it was like a hobby to me. I used to make a note and flashcards, but I never looked at them after making it. Some people do that and try to memorize words, but I can't. Also, I tried to study using those textbooks that are focused on talk as well, but it didn't last. Personally, I don't like the idea of limiting your vocabulary range to work on according to the level you want to achieve. You're a grown person, you should be able to read slash watch whatever the hell you want. So what I did instead was look up the word every time you see a new one. And don't forget to read aloud the whole entry. Don't be lazy with this part because it only takes 30 seconds. You don't have to memorize it right away. The important thing is that you looked it up, even once, and you go back to reading or watching. And you probably see the same word again, and you probably forget what it means, but it's alright. You just look it up again and you remember what it means. Each author or scriptwriter has their tendencies in the vocabulary. So it's very likely you see the same word over and over again. After doing this, let's say six times per word, you'll definitely be able to memorize it. And why it's more effective than putting it into flashcards is you get to know the context. You get to see how it's actually used in several different sentences. 
So since I suck at studying, what I try to do at least is look up the word. I don't force myself to work too hard. Sometimes I'm too lazy to even look it up and it's alright. Don't force yourself too much. That's the best advice I can give you. But you can't achieve it unless you keep working on it. True. But it's better than you run out your motivation one day and never work on it again. So don't spend hours unless you feel like it. Of course, the more time you put into, the faster you become fluent, but you have to keep yourself entertained to do so. So you have to find something you can keep watching or reading. There are literally tons of contents on YouTube. For example, I love makeup, so makeup tutorials helped a lot. I also love watching Let's Play videos. I sometimes watch ones in French and it really helps. Let's Play videos are awesome because you get to see the exact dialogue shown on the screen as you hear the characters speaking or commentating or reading it. If you play the game in a native language before, it'd be so much easier. If you're into interior design or DIY, there are tons of channels for that as well. So find one or two, three even. If you don't have anything you're into, are you even living? Hello? If you don't have anything to share with people, why do you even want to learn English? Well, I teach Japanese in English every day, so I get to speak English pretty much every day, but when I worked in Japanese-only environment, it was super hard. French? I kind of gave up, so let's not talk about that. Well, if you're not in the environment where you can speak the language daily, I guess reading aloud one web article or one page of a book a day is enough. Your pronunciation gets rusty if you don't speak the language, so try to read something aloud. Just one a day. I watch Riverdale just to increase my vocabulary, no matter how crappy Founder series is. Or just watch daily PewDiePie videos. Well, I think I watch something on YouTube at least an hour a day. You know, after 5 or 10 minutes long videos, it's already been in an hour. So it's not hard. So there you have it. How I learn English and how I keep learning it. As you can see, I didn't just get this fluent one day. I've been working on it for almost two decades now. And I still am. I could have improved faster with different methods and been more fluent by now, but, but it worked anyway. So that was my way and it worked best for me. And you gotta find yours. Your materials that keep you entertained. But remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes actual work and patience, whatever the method you choose. So find yours and good luck.